What is auditory learning? So in this video, I'm going to cover common characteristics of auditory learners, and I'm also going to talk about what are my top 10 best study tips for auditory learners. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Janice, and you're watching Sharp Cookie. On this channel, I talk about a lot of different topics related to learning, studying, and problem solving. So if that's something you're interested in, please subscribe and hit the notification bell because I post new videos every week. Now, about auditory learning. It's one of four different types of learning styles. I like to categorize them in four. Uh, again, you'll find other resources that categorize them in three different types. I find four works best for my own students. So the other types are verbal learners, visual learners, and kinesthetic learners. I have a whole series on those, so you can watch the other videos after this if auditory learner doesn't really ring a bell for you. The most basic definition I can come up with for auditory learners is they learn best when they hear information. So they enjoy listening to lectures, podcasts, audiobooks. They really like the aspect of hearing. Even class discussions are something that they enjoy rather than just sitting back and maybe having to read a bunch of articles or textbooks. So that's a broad overview of what an auditory learner typically looks like. They make up about 30% of the population according to the research. And they tend to do a little bit better in school compared to some of the other learners just because school is so heavy on lecturing and talking and having to learn while you listen. Here are a few other characteristics that are very common among auditory learners. One is that they have a very good memory when it comes to hearing. So if someone introduces themselves and says their name, the auditory learner is that person that actually remembers the name. So not me, because I'm visual and I have a really hard time, but auditory learners, this is one of their skills. Same with phone numbers they hear, addresses, or even just random facts that someone says in a conversation. So their memory is best when they're listening. Another key characteristic is they're able to follow verbal directions and instructions very well. Not only that, but here's a really cool thing for auditory learners. They can actually hear the instructions in their head with, this, with that person's voice and tone. So it's almost like they have an audio recording playing back the instructions in their head, which I think is really cool and I wish I could do that. They also just generally prefer having things explained to them versus having to read them. So if they ever have a choice of having a teacher or a tutor or someone explain a problem to them, they will always choose that over just self-study with a book. They're also really attuned to people's tone of voice. So they can pick up on those subtle hints of someone's emotional state, how they're feeling, um, all those little signals that aren't verbally said, but the auditory learner can kind of hear the subtle differences in tone. And my last characteristic I wanna mention is a really fun one. Auditory learners tend to be very good at remembering lyrics to songs. So you know that friend that's in the car and they've only heard the song like one time and they know the whole thing and all the little like crazy rap parts to it. So that would be the auditory learner. Again, if you're not an auditory learner, you're that person that um, gets the lyrics confused like I do. So that's a quick one that you can recognize auditory learners just in your friend group. Before I get into my top 10 study tips for auditory learners, I want to know more about you. Are you an auditory learner? Or maybe you're one of the other types. So let me know if this resonates for you and drop me a comment. All right, on to my 10 tips. I'm going to start with like the one I think is best, okay? The one I think is going to make the biggest difference. My number one tip for audio learners is record everything. So as much as you can, as much as you're allowed to, record it. So if you're in a class, ask the teacher if you can maybe record on your cell phone. If you're distance learning, it's even easier. You can just record on your cell phone. You can use QuickTime to screen record. Uh, record everything you possibly can. 
because it's really important for auditory learners to be able to play that back and listen to it later. Now, a little sub tip under that main tip is record yourself. So one thing I tell my own students that are auditory learners is read through your notes or even read the textbook, whatever you think is gonna be tested on and record yourself on your phone as you do it. Then you have this little recording, kind of like your own little podcast. So when you're out and about um, in your day, you can just listen to it and play it back. And you can mix that with space repetition, which means take long breaks, repeat it again, listen to it again, wait till the next day, listen to it again, wait till before you go to sleep, listen to it again. So that's my number one tip. Record everything you can said by your teacher or tutor and also do your own recordings. All right, tip number two is a little bit of an obvious one, especially if you listen to my characteristics of auditory learners. And that is listen to podcasts and watch videos. So let's say you have to do research for school on a certain topic and the other kids are all reading books on it and reading articles, what you should do, at least in the beginning, because maybe you have to cite certain texts, but at least in the beginning to familiarize yourself the most is find some podcasts, find some YouTube videos, and try to learn about the topic that way. So just like what you're doing now, okay? So you're watching a video on YouTube about auditory learners, and you're much more likely to remember all of these characteristics and tips because you're hearing me talk about it versus reading about it in an online article. Tip number three, repeat facts out loud with your eyes closed. So the reason why this works is when we close our eyes, we block out other sensory information, especially our visual sense, which can be really distracting. And then you can really focus on what you're hearing and the sound of your voice. So as you repeat the fact, really try to use the same exact words over and over again. So whatever subject you're doing, this could be vocabulary for a foreign language, this could be memorizing biology terms, whatever it is, close your eyes and just repeat it to yourself over and over again. All right, tip number four is if you're struggling, hire or get a tutor at your school. Now, I'm not just saying this because I am a tutor. <laughs> of course, I think it's valuable, but Auditory learners, I found out of most of the other types, tend to do the best with tutors, and that's because tutors talk. And auditory learners like to hear things explained to them. So it makes a lot of sense that if you're struggling, you should look into getting a tutor. Tip number five is get a study buddy. So auditory learners learn better when they're talking things out and hearing things. So that works better when there's somebody else involved versus they're just doing independent learning at home. Now, if you can't meet in person, you can do this on the phone with someone because you can still hear what they're saying. You can do it on video chat or Zoom. Sometimes even just having somebody to bounce ideas off of works really well. Now, again, this is specific for auditory learners. There's other learning styles that I actually recommend more independent learning versus group learning or study buddy learning. But for auditory learners, I definitely recommend getting a study buddy. Tip number six is to experiment with background music while you're learning. Auditory learners are kind of funny. They actually don't like to study in complete silence. Yet on the other hand, noises really distract them. So what music does, it sort of creates this environment where there is some noise and it can drown out background noise and conversations. Uh, and it's still not absolute silence. So I find that for auditory learners, music works really well. Now, not everybody can study well with music with lyrics, for example. So you can find some nice ambient music, classical music. Um, you can even experiment with different YouTube videos. I've seen, you know, ocean waves or rainforest or just rain falling. So all of these things are really cool things to kind of try out and see what you like. I know some of my students, they actually have different playlists for different types of studying they're doing. So sometimes the waves crashing works for a certain type and then other times they wanna listen to techno. So 
have different playlists set up and test out what works best with you depending on what kind of studying you're doing. Because sometimes it's just like you're making flashcards and that's one type of studying. Other times you're learning something really hard and new and it takes a lot more focus. So try it out. But I found that using some background music really, really helps. Tip number seven is to read out loud. I have a student, she's in grad school right now, and she has told me she can't really make edits to her paper or even really understand what she's doing unless she reads it out loud. So during our session, she reads it out loud to me. Now, I'm a visual learner, so I kind of tune her out and just read the text. But for her, it's so important for understanding that she read it out loud. Okay, now what if you're in an environment where Maybe you're in a library or somewhere else where you can't just sit there talking to yourself out loud. What also really works is just mouthing the words quietly or not at all, just mouthing them. Um, if you can whisper them, whisper them. All of these things really, really help. So this tip, try it out. Read out loud as much as you can. Tip number eight, ask for verbal directions. <laughs> And also just ask questions in general because you really do well when you get clarification verbally, okay, if you're an auditory learner. So if the teacher just wrote the instructions on the board or the instructions are just in front of you on a worksheet or a test and you're not quite sure, definitely don't be shy about asking the teacher for extra clarification or to explain the directions to you in more detail verbally, because then you're gonna understand it on a whole nother level. So again, don't be shy about this. Ask those questions that you're thinking about and ask directions to be explained to you verbally. Tip number nine is request an oral exam. Okay, so I know this isn't a typical thing. Most of our exams are written, but maybe you have like, a really cool teacher who's very understanding and you can explain to that teacher that you do much better when you can have more of an interactive exam where you can hear the input from the teacher and respond. So you know what? It doesn't hurt to ask. You know, the worst thing they, the teacher or the professor can tell you is like, no, that's not going to work or it just it doesn't make any sense for this type of exam. But I would ask and I would explain your reasons for why you think it would be beneficial for you to take an oral exam. So just go for it. See what happens. All right. You made it this far. You made it to my last tip, tip number 10. And I love this one. So I'm glad you made it to the end because this is a really, really good one. Put things you need to memorize into a rap, a rhyme, a song. You're way more likely to remember it. So if you're like me, you're an American of a certain age, when you were in elementary school, they taught you the 50 Nifty United States song. And it's basically all 50 states in alphabetical order. And to this day, I still cannot get that song out of my head. I know all the 50 states in alphabetical order, and I will for the rest of my life because of that song. So I know what you're thinking. You don't want to make up a song every single time you have to memorize something because Maybe you're just thinking that's a waste of time or you don't want to do it. There's a lot of songs online and on YouTube that people have already made. So if you search for a certain topic with song or rap or rhyme, see what comes up. You might be surprised by how many things are already online with a melody attached to it. That's it. That's all I have for you today on Auditory Learners. I'm so glad you joined me. A couple things I want to mention. If you're really into doing brain puzzles and stuff like that, like I am, I designed my own PDF download of brain puzzles that you can get for free, and I have a link of that in the description. Also, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one virtual tutoring, you can shoot me an email at hellosharpcookie at gmail.com. So I'm looking forward to connecting with you on there. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please throw me a like. I really appreciate it. And it helps other people find this really good information about learning. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. 
I love really teaching students all over the world. It's so exciting. So please join my little Sharp Cookie community here on YouTube. And that way you can watch my new videos come out every week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Janice. Take care.